Hi, welcome to the May episode of More or Less. Uh, this month we are talking with Cody and we have Brian with us, Brian Herndon, who is a licensed counselor, um, no longer practicing, but he brings a lot of expertise to our topic this month, which is mental health. We chose mental health because um, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So we thought this is a topic that really does impact absolutely everybody. Um, whether or not you're part of the limb loss, limb difference community. And we want to take this opportunity to kind of bring some light to it and to talk about it a little bit. So with us, we have Cody and we have Brian Herndon, who is a licensed counselor, no longer practicing, but he brings a lot of expertise to it. How are you today, Cody? I am doing well. And let me just say this podcast is brought to you by Baker Orthotics and Prosthetics, and we are here for all of your orthotic and prosthetic needs. Uh, give us a call, 817-332-7313, and we'd be glad to work with you. Um, yeah, I wanted to spend some time focusing on um, mental health, of course, with May being um, Mental Health Awareness Month. That's uh, something we all need to absolutely um, pay attention to, uh, it can affect anyone, but specifically in the, um, you know, in the limb loss, limb difference community, we deal with a certain level of um, psychological effect from losing a limb or living life without a limb uh, or multiple limbs for that matter. Um, and so we really wanted to dive in and just um, explore and better understand and help others understand what it means uh, to mentally live uh, with a, a disability, if you will, um, with limb loss, with limb difference. And so uh, I got, got a hold of Brian here. Um, he is, um, we go way back to um, when, when Brian was in hospital. And I really wanna just um, give Brian a little bit of space here to just talk about himself a little bit, um, open up and share with us, you know, his, his journey in a nutshell, and then uh, really dive into what, you know, he has uh, experienced and then just go through an overall um, experiences in, 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 in regards to life with, with limb loss and, and mental health. So Brian, if you could just share with us um, who you are and what, where you've been. Sure, my name is Brian Herndon. Um, so I was a licensed professional counselor for 15 years and I uh, got an opportunity to move on and uh, do some work for the government. So I stopped doing the therapy and moved on to uh, government work. And uh, four years ago, I got the flu and my body had a adverse reaction to it. And within, you know, space of 36 hours, I had pneumonia and septic shock and um, my lungs quit and my kidneys quit and my liver tried to quit. It was working on quitting. And uh, so I was in a coma for several weeks and um, woke up from the coma and my wife was standing there and I said, what's happening? And she said, look at your, <laughs> look at your feet. So I looked at him. I was like, now what? And she said, uh, if, if we don't amputate them, you will die. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, you, my first thought was, you know, I have young kids that I still, they still have things that I need to teach them and be around for. And, uh, so we, we did that. And then a few days later, um, amputated all or part of all my fingers, my, my kids and I are working on fractions now. And um, they're, they're like, you have 18% of your fingers left. <laughs> okay. And none of those are a whole finger. So um, that's, that's what happened four years ago. And uh, you got me on, got me on the journey and uh, that's it in a nutshell. That is a really, really quick change of life, right? I mean, you, you, are doing well and then come down with the flu and you think mm -hmm. you know you have the flu and it stinks but most people get over it and there are no lasting impacts um so how did you 
how did you cope with all of that? You had young kids at home, you have a wife, and all of a sudden, your world has turned completely upside down. What emotions did you yeah. feel and how did you cope with them? Um, I, you know, initially there's work, there was work to do. And so I didn't, I don't, I think emotionally, I didn't really, I didn't really do anything with it initially. It was all, there's work to do. Right. You're in triage, right? You, one so step to the next step in so survival. Let's, let's do this work. And, um, you know, part of that was, uh, getting one prosthetic and I had, I had, um, wounds, let's call them on my left leg that took several, almost two months more to heal after I got my initial prosthetic. And so, um, you know, you learn how to work on one leg and, um, my, my hands were kind of wrapped up like boxing gloves for a while. So, um, you know, while you're trying to work up, get on your strength and you, just get your strength back and start working on things. And then, uh, then the emotional things kick in about what you're, you know, you start paying attention to, here's what I'm doing now compared to what I was doing on, you right. know, and then, then you see your phone in the last picture, the kids are crawling all over you. And then the next picture is your necrotic fingers before they amputate them. And you're just like, oh, wow. Okay. So um, just, just, I mean, you're processing the loss, you're working through the loss, but I, I don't, for myself, I wasn't processing it mentally on a cognitive level, like, okay, your legs and fingers are gone. How does that look? You're, I was just trying to figure out what do I do? What can I do? What's the next steps? When did it, when did it hit you? And when did you start kind of looking at more of the emotional layers? Um, I think after I went back to work, which was um, in July, um, I started teleworking a little bit, July of 2018, started teleworking a couple of hours a day, just what I could tolerate. And it came back. And then I realized that mm, cognitively, I'm not back yet. Okay. Cause I don't, I don't, I'm not functioning at the same level. I can't use, I can't do things as quickly. And then, um, you know, I, you start to step outside of yourself and you don't, you're not so focused on what, what am I doing and what's happening with me. And you're able to, uh, pay attention to what's going on in the family and what other people are doing to, either make up for what you're not doing or not able to do. And then I started looking at it. Okay, here's what your loss is. Yeah. And, um, you know, cognitively start to deal with it at that point. Um, I'm actually, we have James who's joining us. So I'm going to admit him right now. Um, I do want to circle back to what you were saying. Uh, James, he can't hear us yet, I don't think. Um, okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience and then we'll come back to Brian because I think what what he is saying is really, really important. Hi, James. We're recording now. Um, we have Brian with us and Cody's with us. And today we're talking about mental health. Awesome. So I was just saying um, Brian was going through his journey with us where he came down with the flu and then um, ended up losing his legs and the majority of his hands and his fingers um, and, and how, when he first started to recover, he was more in like a survivor. I have to do this checklist mode is how I view it. And I think that's common for a lot of the trauma amputees. My amputation was elective, right? Yeah. So I knew going in that, that I wasn't going to wake up without my foot. I had the date and the time. So I feel like from a mental health perspective, I went through a lot of my journey before the surgery. Yeah. I went through the, the grief and the fear mixed together because I really didn't know what to expect. Um, and the one thing that really helped me was writing and journaling. Um, I've always written kind of on and off throughout my life, but really when I felt like I couldn't 
tell people how I was feeling because after my surgery, everybody was lauding me with, with this, you're so strong. I don't know how you do it. You're amazing. You're so strong. You're doing so well. And inside I felt like a fraud and a failure because I knew I was falling apart. I knew I wasn't as strong as everybody was telling me that I was because I was terrified and I was depressed. So when I couldn't tell my friends and my family, I was able to tell my journal and working through that really helped me give voice to my emotions. And once I gave myself the, the ability and the, the grace to really ex- how I'm feeling and the validity to my feelings and my emotions, that's when I feel like I really started to heal. Mm. Wow. You know, the, your journey is everyone's talking about. I, I would gather to say, Cody, you were the most adjusted as, you know, you were able to kind of gradually grow through life and just adjust because you, that's pretty much what you knew. Life is an amputee. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. So, you know, having been you know, three weeks old, have, when I lost my limb, I didn't process uh, until I was much older and could understand and actually um, emote uh, properly. And I grieved the loss of my limb at 12 years of age. So you're talking, you know, a decade goes by and I finally actually uh, feel the effects of it. And did anything in particular trigger that or do you think it was just like growing up and middle school it, transition and kids start to be mean at that age and not mean necessarily no um maybe understanding that there was a um a difference a lack of ability to keep up with some of the activities okay uh you know my life kind of was uh, I was a little bit sequestered to staying closer to home. Um, I wasn't hopping fences with the guys when they would uh, steal stuff out of the neighbor's shed or whatever, you know, because that's the crowd I ran in with. Um, yeah, so I, I think combined with the fact that I was, you know, this prepubescent boy and all the hormones are there and I finally see myself as different, catalyzed into I started to get upset about it. And, and actually was angry that I lost my limb. Whereas before it just what, what was what it was. Right. And I, it took me about a year and I'm not going to say that I got over it. I got through that. Oh, I like that. Yes. <laughs> you know? don't get over it. You get through it. Exactly. Oh, I moved exactly. forward in acceptance and living alongside the fact that I have the loss of a limb. And I, I looked at all the things that I wasn't necessarily able to do that I wanted to do. And I, I said, that's okay. I had, I had to say, that's okay. Um, that doesn't mean you're a worse person and they're better than you or anything like that. Um, and I, I learned also then I had to control um, how I feel. I am in control of my feelings in all of these situations. No one and no um, event, no uh, situation can make me feel upset, can make me, um, you know, uh, change who I am inside. I don't have to feel anger. I don't have to feel sadness and depression. Wow. I took a lot of ownership there. That's a lot. What about you, James? Well, you know, my experience was so different. Um, I, you know, I had 33 surgeries leading up to age 11. When the amputation came, they told me it was my choice. Um, I said no. And then when I woke up, uh, the limb was gone. And wow. I didn't have any support around me. So I felt shocked, betrayed. Um, and I didn't have any, when I woke up, there was no one there to encourage me. And um, so that, it was very traumatic for me. Well, the nurse that was there, you know, I kind of expressed my anger at the betrayal aspect of it. And my mom being a, kind of a stern disciplinarian was uh, when she heard that I had been aggressive in conversation towards an adult, came in and said, um, discipline me. You know, I mean, this is literally hours after the operation. Um, and she said, um, you don't talk to adults like that. Slap. And said, um, do you understand that you're a cripple? 
and continued to slap me until I admitted that it was. So I I didn't have anyone tell me I was amazing outside of the nurses, but I had a family member who was like, no, you're not amazing. You're crippled. You're limited. You won't be able to do things. Now, they thought it was a wake-up call and called it being tough love. Uh, but for me, that was real challenging. Um, one of the things in mourning the loss of the lamb, in the, the, um, I asked to see it before they incinerated it there at Shriners Hospital. And so they let me see it. Wow, really? Remember, yeah. And I can remember looking at it as it was on the display there and trying to move it, you know, and, and not seeing it be able to respond. and Just kind of that disconnect there and, and just kind of remembering those moments. Um, the mental aspect of it, you, I didn't get over it. Um, I bottled the aspect of it, the trauma of it, and tried to use it as fuel. But uh, you guys probably have learned that anger is a fuel that eats away at the person who, who, who tries to hold it. I couldn't harness that. Um, that was a challenge for me. So when I released it, um, the anger and, and just started going towards goals, dreams, and life fulfillment, it took me to age 44. So what happened at 11 carried on an echo throughout life for me. So when we talk about mental health, um, it is crucial that we have this network, these friendships, and the way that we communicate for the limb loss community. Each one of us starts to talk and it helps me find commonality. I didn't know any other amputees. And now I can't imagine living my life without all of you guys in it. Thank you. And I, I, I can't even fathom going through um, that level of just disregard for your humanity. I, I believe that's, you know, something that we all need is to at least feel human in and through all of these things um, that happen um, because we're not our limb. That's you right. Know? We're not just the limb the, or the lack of, we are human beings at our core. Um, so I heard you say something there that just really wants me to you know, spur on a topic that I want to dive into and that's um, coping mechanisms, you know, how, can individuals who are going through this, um, especially, you know, having li lived with a limb uh, and you suddenly, you know, have this loss, what, what keeps you moving in the moment? What keeps you moving in the long run? And how do you get out of like funks and ruts and things that come along? And Brian, I wanted to ask you about this, you know, what do you expect people to, how should I say, maybe various ways, because I know that there's myriad ways people will react to losing a limb, right? Um, most ways are not necessarily positive, let's, let's put it like that, uh, but how would you expect them to react and then how would you give them advice on how to cope with it? Wow, I, you know, I, I feel like when we talked about this earlier, um, the, the one thing that I really landed on is nobody's amputation is the same. And so expecting somebody to, here's what I expect. It, it's difficult to put that on, um, you know, cause your, your amputation is different than mine. And even, um, so expectancies is, is a, is a difficult thing psychologically speaking. I Fair. think I think I think we've covered some of the good ones was is with anger and uh denial and or <laughs> acceptance in Peggy's case. Um you know I, I don't I don't want to go through the Kubla Ross model and and talk about the stages of grief and things like that, but uh you you're you're mourning a loss Event, eventually. Um, you know, like you said, it took you 12 years. James, you struggled with years for significantly longer. And um, like, like what you said, Cody, it's a process, you know, um, just this is a little bit off topic, like my dad's death. 
immediately you're you're dealing with it in one way. Then a couple of years later, you have a different depth of understanding, and so you process it through a different filter. So, um, like I said, I feel, I feel like we've covered some of the common ones. Uh, with with mine, it was like Peggy said, let's let's do the checklist, and then as you get down the checklist, you you feel a little bit maybe I can bite off a little bit of this grief and process it through what I'm able to do currently and and um, work towards some of the things that I'm not able to do currently and process it a little deeper. Mm -hmm. would, would you say like setting goals in the in the moment and even long term, you know, over time saying, you know, if I work toward this goal and I accomplish this and and and, and progress, you know, is that something that you know has helped many people to uh, find relief from just the anguish the the languishing I should I could say um, just sitting in the the funks like I was you know mentioning where we get in the that day-to-day -day just grind of you know I'm so down about everything yeah. and lost feeling you know and uh, uh, like with Peggy there, you know, there's some things like journaling and things like that are helpful. Um, like the checklist for me, you check things off and you see, Hey, there's progress because now I'm not trying to reaccomplish that. Um, an important thing in, in my house was um, feel sad, feel grief, get up in it. And I'll come see you in two hours and, and we'll, we'll go do something else. I used to set the timer. Yeah, you can. I legit would set the timer on my phone and be like, and I still do that, right? When yeah. And I think the one thing that's important for everybody to take away is that this is a continuum. This yeah. isn't something that you wake up one day and go, okay, I'm fine now. Because everybody has bad days, right? Everybody has those triggers that will take you back to the, I call it the, the sucks moments. The, I hate this. I wish I had. Um, moments and you have to allow yourself to feel them you have to be authentic to how you're really feeling the important thing is to not get stuck there right so acknowledge it yes this stinks because of fill in the blank um you know i i have trouble when i struggle doing things with my kids because of my amputation or when I'm having a bad leg day and I can't go to the park and play with them. When they are impacted by my limb loss, that's when I feel it the most profound. Right. And I acknowledge it. And mm -hmm. I say, this really sucks. I wish that this wasn't happening. And mm -hmm. I'll set the timer on my phone and let myself wallow for you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes. And then I force myself to look at something positive that is happening in the moment and something positive that has happened because of my limb loss, right? I have a new career. I have fantastic new friends. If I hadn't had the accident, I wouldn't have moved to Virginia. I wouldn't have met my husband. I wouldn't have my kids that I can't go to the park with, right? Mm -hmm. So then I start to create those chains. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is that you have to allow yourself to feel those emotions because if you don't, they will eat you up inside. Mm -hmm. yeah. and jane oh james has got to head out i think everybody um well i know that i know that just from talking to james he sets goals for himself and he sets goals for others and i know that he he helps others cope um mentally by you know getting uh how should i say not intimate intimate but he gets involved in people's lives and he really comes alongside them to um, help them to cope and set, you know, uh, goals where he, and he stays um, next to them so that they're held accountable. And, and I think that's a, that's a positive move is to hold yourself accountable for how you're reacting to the world around you. You know, I think it's, it's right and good for us to feel and to express our frustration and our anger and our, and our sadness and everything. But but I think that it is also important for us to realize that we also have a responsibility uh, to the world around us to keep moving and keep going and to um, 
you know, feedback, some kind of uh, message of I'm going to work through this in the way that I can. Please be patient with me, but I will absolutely try to be a benefit to you all. Um, I will try to, you know, um, give back to society my, whether that be right there in your family, in your household, um, in your, you know, larger community, uh, your church, your work, you know, um, setting goals to, to be functional in those different paradigms, right? Um, you know, that can also give back to you yourself when you give to others and you set those goals to be productive right you you find that yeah you can heal by being a a giving member of society the one thing i think is important to also remind people is that you don't have to do it alone you're not you're not healing in a vacuum um the, the world is surrounded by people who want to help. There are professionals, there are counselors, there is absolutely no shame in, in getting counseling. Um, you know, you, you can get strength from talking with professionals and from getting guidance and from just having that ear and people who might be able to say, have you thought about this? Or maybe you should try that. That there's such a stigma in, in this society. I do believe that it's starting to fade though about mental health issues and about getting therapy and counseling that if you're struggling you don't have to struggle alone that there are supports out there Mm -hmm. i would i recommend and i'm not telling you to go through a specific um course of therapy but um because limb loss carries the same type of emotional um, effects that, you know, the loss of a loved one can have on a person. Um, counselors who are trained in, you know, trauma, um, they, they are, I would, I would say more equipped to handle, um, the changes that come, the mental aspects that come from limb loss and limb difference. Um, you know, limb loss can have myriad effects on you, uh, from PTSD, you know, to um, just being self, more self-conscious, it can change your whole outlook on life. Um, but at the same time, I've seen it spurred in the other way, where it spurred um, people to, to have this large change in um, their outgoing mentality and, and, and their willingness to do and try new things and So we never know exactly how uh, this is going to affect anyone. Um, But if you're struggling, absolutely, like Peggy said, find some counseling service. Um, You can find a lot of those resources online. Um, I'm going to direct everybody right now to the um, Whole Person Network um, on on the Mighty Network um, app. And we have a group there. So please, if you, if you are, are looking for assistance, uh, camaraderie, um, a kindred spirit, and, you know, just someplace to let it all out, uh, we are available online as well. Again, whole person uh, group on the Mighty Network app. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Brian, thank you so much for, for joining us today and sharing your story. Um, sure. You know, the, 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 the journey that you've been on is, is, is amazing. Um, and I think that your recovery is a testament to true strength. And I'm sure that your family um, has been your biggest cheerleader as well. Yeah, they, I'm sure you heard the little knock on the door. Here and like, Are you okay? <laughs> Kids do that, right? <laughs> So, and thank you. We're going to wrap up for May. This is Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, We're trying to destigmify talking about mental health. Emotions are normal. Grief is normal. Anger is normal. It's healthy to deal with those emotions, get them out, find functional ways, however you can figure it out to deal with them and get help when needed. And yeah, and always remember, 
again, your value is not in the presence or the absence of a limb. It is in your being a person just like everyone else. And hold on to that when you're feeling when you're feeling all of these things. I'd like to give Brian the final word since he's our guest today. Thanks very much. Um, I, I guess I would wrap up by saying, uh, just follow on to what Cody said. As far as go out and find yourself a therapist, please know that a therapist works for you. So shop for a therapist that will help you towards the goals that you want help towards. You're, you're the expert and you're in control of your therapy. I think that's a great reminder for everybody. They, thank you. Yep. All right. Thank we'll you so see much. everyone next month. Bye. Thank right. you. Bye everyone.